So now let's get ready to start talking about moving our planes. Uh, we need to edit our bottom plane. So we're going to go in and first thing I'm going to do is rename this one. And I'm going to call this my op2. I'm going to right click on it after that and say edit. And I need to move my Z up to the top of my actual part. I don't have my part active, so I'm going to go make sure my solid part model is active so I'll have something to grab on. And I'm going to come select my Z arrow and I'll left click on there. And I'm just going to let it come down and snap to where I know the corner of that part is uh, relative to where that stock ended. And that's going to put my Z on the top face of that part. See, it's kind of hiding down inside that stock, and I'll double click. Now I have my WCS moved. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And now that it's saved, I can move on to my toolpath group for OP2. So I'm going to come to my machine groups, and I'll left click on there, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go to groups, and I'm going to create a new toolpath group. I'll leave this as Toolpath Group 2, kind of follows along. You can rename it if you want. And I'm going to do a little different toolpath this time. I'm just going to do a standard zigzag toolpath for my facing of the material off the top of my part. So I'm going to come to my toolpaths. I'm going to go to facing. And for my wireframe, I'm going to select that. It's going to say select OK to use the defined stock, which is what I want to use. And that is the defined stock that we created in the first series. I'll green check for my tool. I'm going to go ahead and grab my two inch face mill. Maybe give it a comment, say face op two, just so we have a little information. Uh, for my cut parameters on this, I'm going to go ahead and make this a zigzag. Uh, that way I'm going to do a zigzag cut path. I'll step it down and do a finish pass at the end. So we'll get into depth cuts here. So I'm going to go with depth cuts, turn that on. And I know that the material that's left is somewhere in the neighborhood of 225 thousandths. Uh, we'll confirm that in a minute. But I'm going to go ahead and say 0.225 divided by 2 equals 112.5. For my finished passes, I'm going to turn that and maybe leave, I don't know, 10 thousandths for a finished pass. Sounds good. For my linking parameters, I'm going to verify everything looks good there. Uh, for my top of stock, I'm going to have to turn my bounding box back on to find my top of stock. So I'm going to go ahead and left click on my top of stock here. I'm going to go to my levels real quick and turn on my bounding box. And I'm going to select the top edge of my stock. That's what we have left over. And I was correct on the 225. That's good. And then for my depth, we're an absolute value. I'm just going to go ahead and check it just to verify, make sure I'm on that corner. We are cutting to zero. And I'll go ahead and green check. Pretty simple. We got our three tool paths. So we got two rough passes and one finish. I'll go ahead and turn off my bounding box now. I don't need that anymore. And I'll go back to my tool paths. There's my facing that we just created. And then for the second one, we're going to have to do a little chamfering around the edges just to clean it up a little bit. So I'm going to expand my gallery and I'm going to use model chamfer because that's the easiest way. Let it do it all for me. Again, in model chamfer, it pulls up your parameter box first. I'm going to go to my chaining for that operation. And I have it set for outside loop and a face. So if I just select this face, it's automatically going to select the outer edges of that for me. And I'll go ahead and green check. Working down my parameter tree over here, we are quarter inch chamfer. Maybe I'll give it a name, say chamfer edges, just so I know what it is. For my cut parameters, we are going to be where left. Uh, everything else looks good here. Uh, small chamfer width and a bottom offset of 50 thousandths. Check my lead in, lead out real quick. That looks pretty good. And on our model chamfer linking parameters, we only have the option for clearance, retract, and feed plane. So I'll go ahead and green check. 
looks like I got a pretty good little toolpath going there. And all I need to do is verify this and we are all done. So I'm going to go into my simulator options, which also controls your verify options. And I'm going to go ahead and select use stock model, op one complete. Notice we have op one rough and op one complete. And then for my fixtures, I'm going to go from a level and I'm going to use that level 10 op two vice. So I'll go ahead and green check to that, select my whole toolpath group, and I'm going to go into verify. And you see we got our vise. There's our part holding on to it the way we wanted. Um, let's go to stop conditions. I want to make sure that I'm off on operation change. That way I can kind of see what's going on. Slow this down a bit. There's our first roughing pass. And there's our second roughing pass. And there's our finish. And there's our chamfer tool. Go ahead and let it run around there. And if I zoom in on that a little bit, you can see we got our little 10 thousandths edge break. It looks good for us. And now we have a finished part. So if we want to look at it, I can come up here and turn off my fixturing. And there is our completed part with chamfers and everything. Well, I hope you enjoyed uh, this little series of getting started with Mastercam 2022. Again, if you have any questions, you can comment or simply contact us and we'll be glad to help you. And if you're interested in any kind of classes or anything like that, feel free to go to our website at mlc-cad.com. And we have a training schedule up there and we do online classes as well as in-person or in-office type training, or we can do custom classes at your facility as well. So again, my name is Bo Rohde, and I will see you all next time.